Hello, fifth graders. Happy Tuesday. So we are going to be getting started with correcting last night's homework. So go ahead in your math workbook, please open up to page 591 and 592 to correct last night's homework. Um, now I want you to be focusing on if you got the correct or you got the same number as my book sh will be showing on the screen. They chose to write their units a little differently in my book and I'll explain why here in just a moment when we start looking at our homework. So page 591 and 592. So last night for homework we started with numbers one through seven. Now as I said my book chose to write the units a little differently. I was showing you how you could write cubes with the exponent 3. So like cubes cubed in a way. Um, what they chose to do, or, or let me also say, or you could write your unit as units with the 3, units cubed. They chose to write units cubed in a different way. Instead of writing units with the little 3, the exponent 3, they wrote out cubic units. So I want you to know that if you ever see cubic units, it's the same as units cubed or units to the third power or units with the little exponent three. Those all mean the same thing. They're just different ways of saying it. So for number one, um, you should have 20 and then maybe you did cubes, maybe you did 20 units cubed or 20 cubic units, any of those work. So number one is 20. Number two is 36. Now this one may have been a little tricky because you count the number of rows. We have one, two, three. And then remember, we need to look at the top to figure out, okay, how many um, cubes are in one row? <clears throat> Or yes, how many are in each row? Well, if we look, or the side, we could look at the side. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have twelve cubes in just the first row. So that means we would be taking the three rows times the twelve cubes, and that would get us thirty-six cubic units. Number three, it's just one layer. So we take the one row times two, four, six, eight, ten. And one times ten is ten. Then for number four, we have one, two rows. And in one row, we have, let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty. So we would take twenty times the two rows, and that would get us forty. 40 cubic units or 40 units cubed. Number five, we have one, two, three rows. And in each row, we have one, two, three, four, eight, 10, 12, 15, 18. Right? Yes. Oh, I did that wrong. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. My bad. I started counting by threes in there too. 24. Um, so we would take 24 times 3 and that would get us 72. 70 cubic units or 72 units cubed. Number 6, you should have gotten 36 because we have 1, 2, 3, four rows, and there are three, six, and nine cubes in each row. So nine times four is 36. And then our last one, number seven, was two rows, one, two, and there are three, six, nine cubes in each row. So nine times two is 18. Then we had, oops, then we had number 10. So for number 10, it said complete the table. Show some different ways that a rectangular prism can have a volume of 12 cubic units. So basically fifth grade, what it wanted you to do is using your knowledge that we take the length times the width times the height, 
how tall something is to find the volume, they would give you two of the dimensions and you would have to figure out what the last one was to make it equal 12, which it says over here. So like the first row, one times one times 12, that equals 12. Two times two is four times three, that's 12. So if we're given two times three, which is six, what would we have to multiply six by in order to get 12? Well, we'd have to multiply it by two. So the height would have to be two for that one. If we still wanted the volume to be 12 cubic units for our fourth row, and it has a length of two cubes and a height of one, well, two times one is two. So what do we need to multiply two by in order to get 12? Well, we have to multiply it by six. The next one, they give us three and one. Well, three times one is three. So what do we need to multiply three by in order to get 12? We have to multiply it by four. Our next row, we have th they give us three and two. Well, three times two is six. What do we have to multiply six by in order to get 12? Well, we have to multiply it by two. Our next row, they give us a three and a one. Well, three times one is three. So what do we need to multiply three by to get 12? Well, we need to multiply it by four. Next row, we have four and one. Four times one is four. What do we need to multiply four by in order to get 12? We need to multiply it by three. And then our final row, and they give us a length of six cubes and a height of one cube. Well, six times one is six. What do we need to multiply six by in order to get 12? We need to multiply it by two, so two cubes. So all that you were doing is making each row equal 12. So what I want you to do right now, fifth grade, is think about what your level of understanding is right now. After our first lesson, first homework assignment with volume, one through five, how are you feeling? And it's okay if you're still at a one or a two. We've only had one lesson. All right, with that in mind, what I'd like you to do is now we are going to get ready for today's notes. So please, in your math notebook, open up to your next clean page and get ready to start the next video for today's lesson. Nice job.